Investigators dig deep into a 200,000-year-old pit filled with the bones of an Ice Age Titan, the Mammoth. Mammoths are one of the most famous megafauna that ever existed. And their familiar furry form is what comes to mind as iconic when you think of the Ice Age. A towering colossus, the mammoth roamed the globe for more than five million years. We knew them. Our species, Homo sapiens, encountered mammoths, saw mammoths. They are a part of our evolutionary story as well. What happened to these once mighty beasts? And why do they no longer walk among us? Did the planet become too hot for these Ice Age Titans? Or did our ancestors drive them to extinction? In France, just east of Paris, is the village of Changy sur Marne. It's home to an extraordinary set of mammoth fossils, discovered during an excavation at a quarry in 2012. Donc, dans cette place, euh, nous avons donc euh, 200, à peu près 200 euh, os euh, de mammouth qui sont regroupés du site de Changy-sur-Marne. Les gros os longs, en fait, on va dire tibia, pelvis, euh, scapula, fémur. Et puis de l'autre côté, donc on a des côtes. Donc là, ça c'est une des dents de la mandibule. Gregory is able to identify the species thanks to these extraordinarily large teeth. Measuring the distance between the enamel ridges on the surface of the molar reveals that these are the remains of a woolly mammoth. Et ça nous permet comme ça de distinguer que euh, les ossements, enfin en tout cas cette mandibule et les autres ossements en fonction de leur taille, dernière espèce de la lignée des mammouths qui est le mammouth laineux, Mammutus primigenus. While Colombian mammoths stand nearly four meters tall, the woolly ones in Changi Semen are nearly a meter shorter. But their feet were large, maybe to support their weight when walking on snow. Their ears and tails were smaller, probably to preserve body heat. They had a hump of fat on their back to store energy. And most importantly, they had a thick coat of fur to keep their bodies warm. Woolly mammoths evolved from the same common ancestor as their Colombian cousins in America. But they preferred to live in much colder environments. Gregory and his team originally dated the Changi Surman bones as between 200,000 and 50,000 years old. But with further testing, they've been able to narrow this age down much more precisely to a period of cold weather between 90 and 100,000 years ago. Woolly mammoths first emerged in East Asia during a cold period 800,000 years ago. They spread across the steppe that ran all the way through Europe. But around 130,000 years ago, temperatures suddenly rose, wreaking havoc with mammoth populations. In Western Europe, the woolly mammoth almost completely disappeared. The newly dated bones of Changi Soman show that it only reappeared on the continent when temperatures started to drop again. Ça fait partie des premiers mammouths qui reviennent en Europe occidentale, qui recolonisent en tout cas le. It's an important discovery that could help scientists better understand the movements of the mammoths during the Ice Age and how sensitive they were to change. To defend themselves, mammoths had the mother of all teeth. From birth, their incisors kept growing, reaching up to nearly five meters and weighing in at 45 kilos. These were the mammoth's tusks. So how did these fearsome Ice Age beasts fare alongside each other? Mammoths could clear snow with them to get to the undergrowth during long cold winters. We should look at 
tusks to be like a, a multi-tool. It's multiple uses. There's a site, oh, about an hour from here, where two mammoths are battling with their tusks. They're getting entwined and they get stuck. So a, a tusk like this could easily be used by a female getting rid of predators. There is enormous debate among scientists still today about why the mammoths died out. And for me, I think the evidence points in one direction. There is a killer that has been implicated, and that killer, very sadly, is us, humans. Early humans were hunter-gatherers who migrated from the African continent probably in several waves, as early as 200,000 years ago. One possibility is that the arrival of modern human hunters in places like North America may have pushed these animals over the edge as they struggled with fluctuating temperatures. Sur ces côtes, dont, dont celle-ci, on a trouvé des, des marques euh, de fines traces euh, fréquentes et puis euh, transversales, euh, obliques à l'axe de l'os et qui peuvent faire penser à des traces de découpe. At the Changi Semain site, the team found evidence that humans were here too. Near the mammoth bones, they find several small fragments of flint and stone that have been shaped and worked into stone tools. Could these shards be the remains of spear or arrowheads? Evidence that humans here were hunting and killing mammoths. The scratch marks are strong evidence that Neanderthals butchered mammoths for their meat. But without the remains of traps or complete spearheads, it's difficult to prove if humans actually kill these two mammoths. Even though Neanderthals were fierce hunters of the Ice Age, hunting mammoths would have been no easy task. Due to their size, fearsome tusks, and the thickness of their flesh, mammoths would have been very difficult to kill. Les mammouths et les hommes ont, ont cohabité en Europe occidentale depuis très très longtemps. Ancient humans would have mostly hunted small animals that were easier to kill, like horse, deer, and bison. Donc ils n'ont pas eu, à mon avis, un impact important sur la mortalité, sur la, les populations de mammouths. Analysis of the bones reveals that these animals were in good health when temperatures started to rise. Scientists think that at first, mammoths thrived on the lush grasses left behind as the glacial ice retreated. But global warming did more than just melt ice. The open grasslands that mammoths preferred steadily began to change. Over the next thousand years, trees covered the mammoth steppe, creating a leafy canopy. At the same time, the mammoths disappeared. Why couldn't they survive in the woodlands? Rising temperatures increased the number of trees, replacing the grasses that mammoths relied on for food. Trees require a certain warmth to grow. Even today, if you travel northwards through Siberia, you pass through the, the rich coniferous forest, eventually the trees start thinning out, and by the time you get past the Arctic Circle, it's the open tundra. Once the climate started to warm from about 15,000 years ago, their range uh, progressively spread northwards uh, until we got to the situation we're in today. They were so adapted to eating and digesting grass, they couldn't survive on leaves alone as trees took over. For almost five million years, these extraordinary giants thrived across multiple continents. They scaled land bridges revealed by lower sea levels and fine-tuned their adaptations to cold climates with specialized teeth and fur. We knew them. Our species, Homo sapiens, encountered mammoths, saw mammoths, drew mammoths on cave walls, hunted mammoths. They are a part of our evolutionary story as well. There have been dozens of these cycles of glacial and interglacial periods, times when the ice grows and the ice melts. But it was only this most recent one when the megafauna died. There is still fierce 
scientific debate about the death of the mammoths. 10,000 years ago, with the dawn of the end of the glacial period, their world transformed. As temperatures warmed and humans spread, these giants finally disappeared forever. It's one of the best studied examples of extinction that we have, and yet we're still arguing about whether it was the climate change, the vegetation change, people, or I think probably a combination of all three. New discoveries here could yet transform what we know about this majestic beast. The mammoths are among the most iconic animals that ever walked the earth. Huge titans that still capture our imagination today. Discovering the truth behind their disappearance would not only solve one of nature's great mysteries, the answer might help save other species from one day sharing the fate of this magnificent lost beast.